Consider a current flowing in a circular coil. Derive an expression for the field produced by the current at a general point on the axis of the coil. So here I have a coil that carries a current I, which is flowing in this direction. And you can see that I have picked a general point P that is at a distance A from its center. And and I, I have set up the XYZ axis such that the Z axis coincides with the central axis of the coil. And uh, I have a, an, an element, uh, a length element DL here, which is pointing in the direction of the current at a distance R from point P such that uh, A, capital R and lowercase r form a, a right triangle and the angle between the r hat vector, that is the unit vector from the length element dl pointing towards point p, and the capital R, the radius of the coil, is alpha. Okay, so we're going to use Biot-Savar law to calculate the magnetic field at this point p. So we're considering a current carrying wire uh, which is made into a coil so we have a current carrying coil with radius capital R and current flowing in the coil is I we can use Biot-Savar law basically uh, to calculate the field strength H at a distance A from the center on the axis of the coil. Okay, so we have defined the distance A from the center on the axis of the coil. The coil has radius capital R and uh, we're going to use the Biot-Savar law to calculate H uh, at the distance A from the center. Okay, so let's write Biot-Savar law. Biot-Savar law dH is equal to I divided by 4 pi the length element dL cross with R hat divided by R square. And this is in SI units. If you're looking for uh, the magnetic induction, for example, dB, you would add mu0. So here, from the setup I have drawn uh, in the figure, you can see that what I'm calling r, the distance from uh, the length element dl to point p, is square root of capital R square plus a square, because it's part of uh, right triangle, it's the hypotenuse. So this is using Pythagorean theorem. So I can now write, uh, because dl and the r hat vectors are perpendicular to each other, I can write uh, dh in the following form. So dh is going to be i divided by 4 pi for dl cross r hat because dl vector and r hat are perpendicular and r hat uh, has a magnitude equal to 1 uh, i can write this as i over 4 pi dl divided by um, r square capital r square plus a square and if you look at this dh vector using the right hand rule if you look at uh, if you point your fingers towards dl, curl them towards r hat, your thumb points in the direction of dh, 
And if you keep repeating this procedure, you can see that we're forming a cone here. And due to the symmetry, uh, the dh vectors components on the xy plane will cancel. The only thing that will remain here will be the z component. So we're going to have a dh z component and those dh z components will add up and give us the net magnetic field at this point. So we're going to have a total magnetic field um, H basically will be pointing in this direction. So that's what I see from the symmetry of the geometry. Okay, so let me note that. Uh, notice that uh, due to rotational symmetry, all the H components on the XY plane will cancel out. Okay, so if you look at the components on this on the XY plane, which is the H sine alpha, those components will cancel out and we will be left with only the Z component. Okay, then with this argument, I need to consider DHZ. For that, I have to determine the angle between the Z axis and the DH vector. So I see that I have 90 degrees alpha. Here I have a 90 minus alpha. That's the angle. And here is 90 degrees between r hat and the dh vector. So 90, 90 minus alpha, alpha would be the angle between the h vector and the z axis. So dh z will be equal to dh cosine alpha, which is i over 4 pi dl divided by r square plus a square. Now I have to figure out what is cosine alpha. Cosine alpha is capital R divided by lowercase r. So it will be uh, capital R divided by lowercase r, which is square root of capital R square plus a square. So I can see that this dhz is i divided by 4 pi r divided by uh, r square plus a square to the power 3 over 2 dl. Okay, then I can uh, add up the contributions from all elements. So hz will be the uh, closed in integral, uh, the loop integral of dhz which will be equal to i over 4 pi r divided by r square plus a square to the power 3 halves, the closed loop integral of dl. And this will give me the circumference of the coil, basically. So this will be i over 4 pi r divided by r square plus a square to three halves and then for the integral dl around the loop I have 2 pi r. So I find that hz is equal to um, the 2 pi will get rid of the 4 pi and give me a factor of 2 here. So this will be equal to i r squared divided by 2 r squared plus a squared to the power 3 halves. So the magnetic field at point P, which is uh, a distance A from the center, center on the axis of the coil, uh, can be written as i r squared 2 
r squared plus a squared to the power 3 halves in the z hat direction. And I have done this in SI units. So the, uh, the unit of this quantity, if you calculate this, is going to be in ampere per meter. So one thing I want to check is what happens if I'm right on the center of the coil. So notice that when A is equal to zero, that means we are at the center, at the center of the coil. The magnetic field at, uh, at the center at A is equal to zero will be equal to I R squared divided by two, uh, I substitute for A zero, r squared to the power 3 halves so it will be r cube so i r square over 2 r cube and this will give me an r here so the answer is for h0 i have i divided by 2 r as the magnitude and if you follow the right hand rule uh, you curl your fingers in the direction of the current the thumb points in the k hat direction so the magnetic field at the center will be i over 2r in z hat direction in amps per meter so this basically checks and if you have the b field the magnetic induction that will be mu 0 i over 2r uh, in tesla in amps per uh, in, in the z hat direction okay so we have used Biot-Savar law in order to calculate the magnetic field uh, that is due to the current at a general point on the axis of the uh, current carrying coil. So I have assumed that the coil carries a current I, it has radius capital R, and I'm looking at the magnetic field at a distance A from the center on the axis of the coil. In order to use Biot-Savar law, we have uh, considered a general uh, current element dl, dl vector. Uh, the dl vector carries uh, the current i, so it is i dl vector. Uh, using the Biot-Savar law, dh is i over 4 pi dl cross r hat over r square. This is an SI unit. And r, the distance between the current element and point P is square root of capital R square plus A square. I've noted that R hat and DL vectors are perpendicular to each other. So if you look at the angle here, the angle between these two is 90 degrees. So I have sine 90 equals to 1 and R hat is a unit vector. So the DL cross R hat, DL vector cross with R hat gives me just DL. So uh, now that I have written the h vector, I, I looked at the contribution from all such current elements. So if you consider any other uh, element here, for example, you can consider an element here, dl vector here, you would see that if you look at the uh, contribution, the magnetic field from, uh, due to this element will be lying on this cone. And so the, all the dh vectors that I can uh, find here will be uh, only adding up in the z direction, in the z hat direction, but not uh, on the xy plane. So this is my z hat direction. Okay, so with that, I considered the z component, which is dh cosine alpha, and I've added up... Uh, the contributions from all current carrying elements in the closed loop integral dl and find i find that the magnetic field at point p is i capital r squared divided by 2 capital r squared plus a squared to the power 3 halves in z hat direction and it's in amps per meter since i've used si units if i set a is equal to zero i find the magnetic field strength at the center is i over 2r in amps per meter 